Hello, my name is David Carr and today I'll be showing you how to shot blast glasses using a vinyl mask technique. This technique can be used for a wide variety of applications and is unrestricted by the shape or contours of the glass. Using this method, the entire surface or just small portions of the glass can be engraved with ease. The first step in the process is to reverse engineer part or all of the glass that you want to create the mask for. Once you've done this it can be scanned in and used in a 2D CAD package to draw up your designs. I'd recommend whilst you're doing this to draw on spacing and level lines so that when you've got the mask peeled flat it gives you a sense of the distortion to the glass. This will be particularly useful if you're doing flat lettering on a curved shape. Once you've created your designs in the 2D CAD package, they can then be saved out as a DXF format. This can then be sent to a vinyl cutter to create the masks at full scale. Once the masks have been cut, using a sharp scalpel start to remove the positive parts of the mask that you want to become shot blasted on the glass. I'd recommend to start by taking off all of the closed shapes such as I's, L's and V's as these can be very easily removed. When it comes to the open shapes on the vinyl mask these will require a lot more care and attention. As you start to remove the positive image, apply pressure to the internal part of the shape which should then remain in place as the rest of the mask is removed. Once the masks are fully cut out you can now start to transfer them. This can be simply done by laying down lines of masking tape next to one another on top of the mask. Apply firm pressure over the entire mask to make sure that the vinyls adhered properly to the masking tape. Once this is done you can now start to gently peel the backing away from the vinyl. If you're doing this at quite a steep angle you should find that most of the parts come straight across onto the masking. Once this is done, it's now a simple matter of lining the mask up and rolling it around on the glass. When you're doing smaller parts, the positioning of this is a lot easier, however as the mask gets larger and larger, more care is needed to ensure it's done straight. Once all the vinyl has been applied, the masking tape can then be peeled back off. The best way I've found to do this is to double it back on itself and pull gently. Because of the steep return angle of the tape, the small elements of the vinyl such as in between the lettering should be more inclined to stay in place rather than to bend upwards with the tape. There may be some areas on the vinyl mask that have rippled whilst it's been applied. This isn't anything to worry about as long as it's in a non-critical area such as a large blank space. Once the tape's off, just spend a few moments making sure that all the vinyl has been pressed down firmly and is properly adhered to the glass. After this has been done and you're happy with the vinyl mask, Continue to tape around all of the other exposed areas, particularly with glasses, tape across the open apertures to make sure that none of the blast media gets into them. To demonstrate the effect on different media, I've vinyl masked up an aluminium plate in the same way. In the shot blaster, Use a very fine medium and a pressure of anywhere between 20 to 40 pounds per square inch.
it's important to keep the blaster nozzle a good distance from the glass and always keep it moving. If you remain in the same place for too long, this may risk either eroding the vinyl mask or it lifting under the pressure. After the parts have been shot blasted, inspect them to make sure you're happy that there's a nice even finish across the blasted surface. You can then proceed to remove the vinyl masks. This is just a simple matter of peeling back all of the tape and the vinyl away from the glass. Work in the same way for the aluminium plaque, however be careful not to scratch the fresh surface. Producing personalised glasses in this way is a relatively cheap and highly accurate method, allowing you to achieve very sharp engravings. This method also allows you to rapidly produce very professional looking parts. For purely decorative items, you can again use the vinyl masking and shot blasting technique. Here, before removing the masking, I've applied a light coat of tinted lacquer to the parts. This can be another good way to add a diverse and personalised element to your gifts.